So antinatalism is quite simple to understand. It's a philosophy that assigns a negative value to the concept of birth and life. And proponents of this way of thinking are usually against the procreation and continuation of life. They see it as inherently wrong to birth conscious and sentient beings without their consent. And so in many cases, not necessarily all, they might actually have some hatred towards their own parents, and they themselves will never support the idea of having children of their own. Naturally, adherents of pronatalism have a completely different view on life. They view life as something to be cherished, celebrated, and multiplied. Well, maybe not necessarily multiplied, but they do have a positive outlook on the overall concept of existence. It's important to realize that for the vast majority of human existence, we've always been pronatalists. And that's really because we just couldn't think beyond that. From an evolutionary perspective, it's always been about survival. And what aided our tribalistic caveman ancestors with that was strength in numbers. They needed to breed as many children as possible so that they could grow up and eventually aid the tribe by fighting and hunting. Unless challenged, pronatalism remains the default state. Let's be honest, the only reason we exist is because of some program that's embedded deep into human psyche that urges us to multiply and breed. For whatever reason, we've always been governed by one instinct, which is to survive. And reproduction is an extension of that instinct. And I think that very fact alone makes us not really want to face life or live life. To know that the only reason you exist is because nature demanded it. Well, it didn't actually demand it because, you know, nature doesn't have its own will, but you get what I mean. Now, in that statement, I'm actually delving into the concept of nihilism, which is, of course, not the topic of this video. But if you do want to hear what my take is on nihilism, be sure to check out this video titled, Why the Meaninglessness of Life Will Set You Free. It'll also be linked in the description box down below. Regardless, nihilism does sort of intertwine with this concept too. The two do go hand in hand, because if life has no purpose or meaning, then it's not worth living. Therefore, antinatalism. Now, as I mentioned, since pronatalism is the default, so to speak, antinatalism is a thought slash philosophy that comes about after we have the ability to think and ponder about the nature of life. It's the sort of thing that comes about after we have the luxury and the time to be able to ponder and reflect over these things. In other words, the ability to reason is required for us to be able to think about this. Now, as I mentioned in my last video on why humans chase pleasure, we have evolved too far for our own good, and therefore we have a hard time reconciling our primitive desires with our advanced consciousness. Be sure to check it out to get a better understanding of what I mean. So if we have evolved to be able to assign a negative value to our own existence, we have gone way too far on our evolutionary trajectory, and have thus, as a result, developed thought processes that go against our evolutionary program. So one can say that the antinatalist thought process is a failure of evolution, or is it? I think we can look at it a bit differently. If we look at the total human population graph, it was only in the year 1804 when we reached 1 billion. And now, just over 200 years later, we're at a point where we're almost at 8 billion people. War is the lowest it's ever been, poverty is at an all-time low, and living conditions for the average person in many parts of the world have greatly improved. So the idea or mindset of strength in numbers has sort of lost its relevance. In the sense that throughout most of human history, we've always been fighting and struggling to survive, our priorities have, in a sense, shifted. So it's only natural that since we're creatures that can question our existence and work towards making our lives better, that we would eventually be able to come up with all of these different philosophies. Or hey, maybe we've just reached a point where rather than having lots of kids who we can't really cater to and take care of properly, it's better to have less kids and take care of their mental, psychological, physiological, and emotional needs, and actually treat them as individuals rather than tools for survival. So the problem still remains. Whether you have 10 kids or one, it's still a matter of consent, right? Well, I'm not denying that, but let's take a step back. Most people who are alive want to continue living. And those who don't, typically don't because there's something about life that they hate or something that they just can't face or withstand. It could be external circumstances, it could be a traumatic past, or it could be mental or physical ailments or conditions. But chances are, whatever it is that they hate about life is just one aspect of life. And if that were to be removed, they would most likely enjoy life. I also want to revisit the nihilism point. 
because it's possible that you may have lived a regular and decent life. There may have really been nothing wrong with your life. But since you saw no reason to continue living, maybe you don't want to continue to live. Or maybe you wish you had never lived in the first place. But then again, the same question arises. If you found a reason to live, would you then want to continue living? Well, I can 